just told me, and I was just actually thinking about the same thing driving over here. What a difference a year makes. That's part of my reach. That's okay. Your time. Try to. There we go. Got it. You know, last year it was a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. And this year, I guess it's a little bit the same, but quite a bit different. Huh? Um, comments to begin with, I guess. Um, you know, for me, uh, days like today are never easy. I mean, I remember it wasn't long ago I was standing in front of you um, over at Tully's and I had a little bit of a different vision in my mind. And, um, here we are a couple years later and standing in front of you telling you that I'm leaving town. And uh, I know that there's a lot of questions out there. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I don't know how many of those questions I'm going to be able to answer today. Um, again, it's just really a personal decision on my part, one that, um, like I said, might raise more questions than I have answers for. But at the end of the day, it's my gut, it's my heart, and uh, I've had a great two seasons here. I really do appreciate the Ottawa Senators and everything that Binghamton has to offer, from you know Tom Mitchell right on down to my staff, Steve Sterling, Matty Meacham, you know, all my Sebi, Glenn, and uh, even you people. You know, I think you've been wonderful. I think you know how I feel about that. It was a year where not a lot went our way. Um, but um, you guys, you know, you handled yourself with a lot of class and you did your jobs very well. And I just appreciate that nobody ever piled on us. And uh, you can't say that about a lot, of, a lot of markets and a lot of communities, but this is one that we can say that about. So we do appreciate that. Um, questions? Joy, no? Joy, you usually get the first one. Not where the answer is. But, um, well, you mentioned you've enjoyed your time here. I guess what were some of the highlights for you? What are the best memories you're going to take away from this experience? Well, uh, you know, that's, I could talk all day about that one. You know, I mean, how can you not? First of all, I think you have to understand that I am somebody that loves what I do. I absolutely enjoy um, working players. Well, first of all, I, I love to coach. But then when you throw that to the side, uh, the fact that you have an opportunity to work with young players, to help young players develop, help young players to get uh, be good pros, um, you know, that's all part of it. But then, you know, you get into the winning. Winning is a lot of fun. Last year's championship was probably more than a lot of fun. I don't know that you can ever win a championship and not say that those are special days, special moments. And uh, and you don't get many opportunities to do that. So um, that's just a few. I think you said uh, at some point last offseason that every player wants to go to the NHL, but so do the coaches as well. Does your decision here, is that kind of a, a big reason maybe? No, no, not at all. In fact, um, I'm not, uh, you know, would I like to coach one day in the NHL? Sure. I mean, I don't know that there are many coaches in the American Hockey League or even in, in any league that don't. That, that, that you don't have that dream. I mean, it's almost like when you're a kid, you dream about playing in the Stanley Cup and scoring the overtime goal. You know, once that dream is behind you, then as a coach, when you get in this position, obviously it's something that you'd like to do. Um, but I gotta be honest with you, it's never been what drives me. It really isn't. I just love what I do. I love working with players. Um, I enjoy helping mold them, making the best pros that they can be. And, you know, I practice what I preach. I mean, I tell my guys all the time, you can't sit by the phone. I mean, what you have to do is focus on getting better every day somehow, some way. And if you get better every day at some point, if you do your job, that phone just rings. You know, it's no different with the coach. I mean, um, you know, I would, I would one day enjoy coaching in the NHL, but I got to be honest with you, it's not something that, 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 that drives me. I just love what I do. I really do. How long ago was this decision made for you? Um, uh, obviously, you've taken some time to think about it, you know. But how long ago did you come to the realization in your mind you wanted to move on? Well, you know, it, it, it definitely was not something that you know just clicked. You know, it was something that it was festering in the back of my mind, and um, you know. Uh, not a decision that you would take lightly, for sure. And, um, you know, these jobs aren't easy to come by. You know, I know there's 30 jobs in the NHL. They're not all open. They're not all available. So, you know, and, and on top of that, I don't know too many teams that are looking for coaches that just finished in 
last place. So, I mean, we can throw that one right out the window. Um, uh, there's 30 jobs in the American League, but right now, with me walking away from this one, I think there's three available. And, uh, you know, those aren't easy to come by. So, the reason I bring that up is because, obviously, it's something that um, you don't you don't do something like this if you're not 100% comfortable with that decision. And so it was something that I thought long and hard about. Um, and, you know, shortly after the season was over with, I knew it was the right thing to do. Do you yeah. have any idea what's next for you or uh, any no ideas? I have no idea. I have no idea. And this is just the way I work. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I'm not one of those people that looks for the next job when I'm getting a paycheck every two weeks from the one that I'm in. You know, it's just not my nature and, you know, it's not what everybody would do, but it's the way that I do things. And obviously, to be fair to Ottawa, um, I don't think that would have been fair to anybody. If I knew in my heart, if I knew in my mind that this is what I was going to do and I don't tell them and I pursue other opportunities and the next thing you know, it's the middle of summer and I hang them out to dry, I mean, that's just... It's not the way I work, and it wouldn't have been fair to anybody. So the honest answer is um, I don't have anything out there, but you know what? I'm comfortable with my decision. It's just the way I work. It's not the first time that I've jumped without a parachute, and we'll just see if uh, something comes my way. Do you feel burnt out at all? No, I'm not burnt out at all. I love what I do. I mean, again, <clears throat> um, no, I'm not burnt out at all. No, that's not an absolute non issue. I told you we were going to raise more questions than we had answers. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about some of those factors that led to your decision? Um, well, I said, no, it's, it, there's two factors. One was my heart, the other was my gut. You know, and I won't get into exactly the whys. Um, like I said, it was a personal decision. And, um, you know, it was a, a decision that I made. Um, but obviously there, there were talks with Brian. You know, and uh, Brian was in the loop. Brian knew exactly where I was coming from. Brian was great and gave me the time that I needed, if I needed more time. And um, you know, and, uh, and that's just where it ended up. If Ottawa was able to supply more solid talent like last year, here or that, but no, because I don't. Honest, to be quite honest with you, it wasn't about the losing. You know, I mean, I don't like to lose. You guys have been around me enough to know that. Um, you know, I, I don't like to lose. I don't know any coach that does, and this was a tough year. But I've had tough years in the past. I don't run from the tough year. I don't run from the losing. Um, you know, it really had nothing to do with, with, the, with the winning and the losing. It was just more, um, it, was other, it was other things. Despite a tough year here, how personally satisfying was it for you to watch all these players oh, yeah. develop here? Do so no, much? i, I got to tell you, this has been... Um, I'll tell you, there have been a lot of similarities between um, this experience and the experience that I went through last year having won the Calder Cup, just on a different scale. I mean, last year when we won the Cup, yeah, I really had no idea um, the magnitude of winning the Cup and how people were paying attention. And, and then people in today's world just started reaching out to you and a lot of text messages and congratulations and all that other stuff. Very similar here. I mean, um, you know, I, I feel, I feel very, uh, I feel very good about um, some of the people that have reached out to me. And uh, when you get former players that are reaching out to you and wanting to know that everything's okay, or telling you how much they enjoyed their time here in Binghamton and playing for us, I mean, that, that means a lot. And uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of good. A lot of good moments, you know, and, and that's what I like about the American League is you really do have the ability to touch these kids. I call them kids. They're really not kids. I mean, they're young adults, and, uh, but you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, when you get those calls or when you get those texts and they touch out, they reach out, they want to see how you're doing, it makes you feel good. How tough was this for you on a family uh, perspective considering uh, your family had good roots here and your son even played, you know, yeah. hockey here? No, you know, Jake... Um, obviously, I'm sure that's who you're referring to, but, you know, Jake is a sophomore here in Bethel, and he settled in well, um, and that was, that was part of, that was part of my decision, you know, and, uh, 
that had to be factored in. And I'm sure that there are parents out there that can appreciate exactly what goes into that decision, and you don't take it lightly. Um, but having said that, you know, everything was out in the open. There was dialogue, and Jake was involved. He knew what was going on. He knew what I was thinking. And, uh, you know, as much as a 16-year-old, I say they don't get a vote. They certainly have a voice. And uh, he had a voice, and uh, he's disappointed, but he understands, and he's willing to move on. And so I think that shows the maturity of Jake. But at the same time, I think you have to understand, not that it's for everybody, but this is just the way we put our lives. You know, I mean, since my kids were little, um, you know, we've had the experience of the world. I mean, we've lived in a lot of different places. I mean, we've been all over Europe. Um, we've had quite a few stops along the way here in the States. So it's not like we lived in one community or one home for 16 years and then decided to uproot our family. I mean, this is something that we've done in the past. And um, I've got three adult children. And every one of them to a T will tell you that they would change. They've enjoyed what we do. They love what Dad does. They understand that we move around a little bit, maybe more than some would like. But it is what it is, and uh, and I think it's actually been more of a positive than a negative. What are you going to miss most about this community? I think everything. I don't think most can really factor in there. You know, the one thing that I 